So now we've got the rear section in place on the car, we know that, that fits nicely. The next job is to set up the tiger panel on the car between the rear section and the windscreen. So this job has to be done on the individual car that these tiger panels are being fitted to. I can't really do it at my end on my own car. I could, but um, if they vary, if the uh, shape differs slightly between cars, which it could do, uh, you're not going to get the best fit of the tiger panel. So the tigers would be supplied in two halves, an inner and an outer. We can see here the outer, pretty much the same as a normal standard tiger panel except obviously for the raised rib down each side on the Malaysian style hardtop and it does extend an extra five mil down at the side here as well because ordinarily um, that's where the stitched lip would be in the canvas but obviously not having the canvas we need to cover where the tiger channels would go just to avoid seeing them so the fiberglass does extend probably about another five mil further down but other than that the leading edge and the rear edge are pretty much the same as a standard roof. So the main difference on the tag panels is the inner section which we can see here. Totally different to the originals as you can see it's just more of a frame running around all four sides but it's also got certain contours in it meets up around here basically all four sides on the inner which gives an extra layer of bonding just to stiffen it up it gets bonded around the outside edge as well so underneath here and obviously the uh, front and back flanges so it's a very very stiff panel when it's all bonded together the two halves are quite flimsy on their own but the sickflex when joined and the two halves are mated up uh, becomes very stiff You can see also a strengthening rib down the middle there, which is fiberglassed into the outer skin All adds up to create quite a stiff panel, but it does need bonding in place in two separate halves on the actual car So we start by fitting the inner skin, just making sure that it sits under the windscreen rubber nicely, locates into the rear section properly as well. The one thing we're looking for though is a bit of movement here, we need a slight gap. Without the gap the outer section won't slot in place, so this doesn't need to be hard up, it can be close. But as long as there's a gap, that's what we need. And check along the front edge as well. If it will compress on the rubber, just enough to allow the outer section to slide under here. That's what we're looking for. So not a tight fit, but it does need to, to fit forwards far enough without fouling the um, fiberglass underneath the windscreen rubber. It engages in the rear okay, that's fine. Again, there will be some movement. Perfectly normal. Remember, there's the outer skin to go in yet. I just check around here as well, check the other side. Same again, if you look at the rubber, we've got some movement. We can get the outer, outer skin in there. And it'll sit quite firmly when uh, the two halves are together. You can see the, um, the locator peg there, which might need opening now actually, looking at it. It's just touching, so it might need a bit more fiberglass taking off there, but we'll see when, when we get the outer section on. But for now, that's not a bad fit. 
it's worth mentioning quickly as well that on the panoramic Tiger panel, it uses the same inner section. Um, and this is the opening for the sunroof. But uh, the flange is hidden behind the border of the window. But it's the same inner skin, regardless of whether it's a solid Tiger panel or the glazed panoramic version. So we've got quite a nice fit at the front. The rear pushes up quite nicely. Possibly just wants a little bit taken off the rear flange, just to tighten that up a little bit. But that's not bad to begin with. I do have a little gap there, which will close up if I push it together. But what I've noticed is when I do that, it opens it up at the other side. So now I've pushed it fully home at the near side. It's just opened this up a little bit, so it tells me it's pivoting in the middle there. So I think I need to uh, just open out the fiberglass where the peg locates. Because I bet if I pull that in, it opens it at the other side. Yeah. So I'll open that with the Dremel now and that'll fit a lot better. If I just pull the roof backwards slightly, we can actually see in there the inner just wants cutting back. The roof's pivoting on that lower section because it's not cut back far enough, which is making the roof do this, depending on which side it's pushed in at. So that bottom section will get opened out now. This leading edge is fitting nicely now. After opening up the fiberglass where the locating peg goes on the inner section, we've got a nice parallel gap all the way along the front, fitting nice at both sides. It's not pivoting like that, like it was. It's a simple adjustment there. And we've got a nice fit. All looking good at the passenger side. And the same at the driver's side as well. It's nice that. So now we need to check the back for the same thing. 
when the rear section is located up to the tiger panel if it's pivoting in the middle which this one does appear to be doing and it probably wants a millimeter or so taking off the flange we've got a nice fit here at the driver's side but it opens up at the other side and if I tighten this side up I can get a nice fit but then it opens at the other side so it tells me that this flange is a bit too deep probably somewhere along the middle if I separate that we can actually see that the the lower section is slightly longer there's a couple of mil there that could be ground off so that's the next job So we've got these panels nicely set up on the car now, all fitting nicely where it should, around the rear deck. Nice gap between the rear section and the roof panel. Sitting nice up to the windscreen. Remember that these two panels don't need to be tied up to each other. You do need a millimetre or so gap, otherwise it would rub the paint off. But other than that, they do need to be parallel and sitting nicely like this. We can have a quick look on the inside now. This outer skin isn't primed, so there's a lot of light coming through, so we can actually see quite clearly. But you can see along the front edge, the inner section is fitting nice. And the outer is fitting nice over the top of it. We've got an equal gap between the inner and the outer on each side, where the outer overlaps. Same this side. Nice and parallel, even gaps. It's important to note that this gap here, the rubber, should be sitting nicely behind the contour of this inner section. If there's any fouling, then something's not right. This car is at the stage now where both halves of the tiger panel have been nicely tailored to match each other. They're sitting nicely on the car, sitting nicely up to the windscreen and engaging properly into the rear section. So the next job is to remove them from the car, separate them, and then key up the bond faces and prime with Seeker 215 clear primer. A flat disc on an angle grinder is probably the best way to prep the bond faces and expose clean fiberglass. And then after degreasing to remove any dirt and dust, the Seeker primer can just be brushed on. It's important to remember to let it fully dry though, and depending on the temperature and the humidity, this can be anything from 30 minutes up to 6 hours or more, so it's probably best to leave this overnight. After an overnight cure, we're now ready to move on to the next stage, which is setting up both halves of the tiger panel on the car and bonding them together with polyurethane sealant. 